I think my ageism got in the way of just people, you know, thinking you're young. Until I start talking, people underestimate. Yeah. And I think that's been a barrier definitely within my career so far, but pushing past it. Welcome back to the Beige Mogul Show. Today I'm here with my friend Caden Bishop. He is the co-founder of FanMated, which is a top CRM for artists and fans alike to connect. Caden, welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me. Like I was just saying a couple minutes ago, I haven't done a podcast in a year and a half, two years, so it's good to finally be producing some content again out there. hundred percent, man. You're literally one of the youngest friends that I have in the startup space, man. Um, I think we met during LA Tech Week, yeah. right? And, and you know, I just love your enthusiasm and your willingness to learn. And uh, yeah, man, you've been doing some really cool stuff. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah. Um, I feel like I've been building businesses since I was a kid, like before I could, like basically when I could walk. Uh, I started at seven years old. I started a snack cart company, basically just selling snacks to office employees. I kind of just knew from an early age that I wanted to build stuff and, you know, be my own boss. Um, and from there, I just built so many more things. It went from uh, sneaker reselling and kind of reselling, you know, high coveted items. Yeah. To that in high school, I started a nonprofit called All Things Financials. And we basically taught kids how to stock trade for free around the globe. We got hundreds of members, turned a portfolio from 800,000 to 2.4 million in two and a half years. And then I also managed like $300,000 at um, 17 years old. And the last two years, I've been doing some soul searching and now I'm working on fan making, which has been wow. an absolute blast. That's amazing, Ken. And, and amidst doing all of this, you're also a full-time student, right? Yeah, I mean, it feels like a, a side quest for me, right? <laughs> like, you know, 16, 18 credits to breeze. And it honestly, it kind of, I kind of laugh at it when people say, you know, being a full-time student is difficult but I'm also very efficient in my time boxing. Tell us a little bit more about that. How are you so efficient doing what other students would say is the tense workbook? It's a combination between time boxing and my commitment to you know, my passions and also choosing classes that are front load heavy. So classes that are very mindful within class, you know, doing work in class or having to pay attention to your class and not so much work outside of class. And that way I'm able to be super efficient with my time and also how I delegate. Uh, so I, I think that's been the, the key to my success. Man, I'm, that's what I love about the college system. I mean, I'm a dropout. I mean, you've been thinking about dropping out or transferring, um, but it's like, it's so cool how many universities have pivoted, right? They're seeing this emerging generation of entrepreneurs and founders. And it's awesome how universities are starting to build curriculums and incubators in-house that facilitates top talent on yeah. owners like yourself. Yeah, uh, even though maybe I'm you know, no longer considering being in school, I think it, especially so, it's, it's great for the students. Uh, but if there is any students watching, I would recommend looking into, if you are gonna do incubators like IP, um, a lot of schools will take IP. The school I go to, Loyola Marymount, here in Los, Los Angeles, they don't take IP for their incubator. Um, and it's honestly been a great program. So tell us a little bit more about Fanny, man. I'm, I'm really curious. It kind of started off at a frustration for ticket resellers, right? I'm sure all of us can imagine paying $1,000 for tickets. Uh, last October, I was kind of just ideating with friends. We started there. And I just have a love for building business structures. And I kind of found myself wanting to help others build their businesses. And so we kind of dove down this hole of data, right? And so within the music industry, it's a lot of guesswork. There isn't a lot of direct data for artists to use and actually build their fan bases. And within the music industry, the top 1% of fans, I count up to 80% of an artist rep. So you have such a concise segment that accounts for so much revenue, and yet they're not able to directly interact due to like data segmentation. So you, know, you have fans on Instagram or fans on Spotify, but there's a one direct place where you can interact with fans and reward them for their behavior. So that's exactly what we're trying to do. We aggregate ticketing, storefront, and social all into one and allow for artists to build those connections with fans and also remove the guesswork out of the stuff that they're doing by you know, being able to build data. Wow, that's super cool. So what, what is like primary problem that you're, you're seeing a tackle? It's just artists having access to data. That's wow. simply it and being able to connect with fans. Right, and yeah. you describe it almost as like a CRM for artists, which I've never heard of a CRM for artists, right? I mean, you hear about HubSpot and yeah. Salesforce, but those are more for business owners. I think that's a really cool and innovative product, man. Uh, what led to the, the fruition of Fan David? I love music festivals. And like I said, I love building business structures. And so I kind of found myself at the intersection between art and business. Yeah. Uh, when we pitched that startup weekend, we had one of the largest teams, 12 people. And then my best friend and I, Cole, who's also my co-founder, we've now continued it on just us two with a couple others pushing it forward. And that's kind of just how it began, it just with a small little lotion 
it just kept moving forward and I found myself just diving deeper into my curiosities and creativity. What are some of the biggest challenges that you face as a young entrepreneur, right? How old are you? I, I'm 20 right now. 20 years yeah. old. We were 19 when I met. Yeah. And now 20. I turned 21 in July. Wow. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? You're way ahead of your time. I yeah. mean, how many 19, 20 year olds do you know that are also starting a business? Very yeah. few, yeah. you know, come to mind. Tell me, man, like a little bit more about the challenges that you face. Yeah, I think the biggest one that I grappled with for so long that I'm finally making the past is imposter syndrome. I'm sure you developed the same, mm -hmm. especially being a college drop and being so youthful. I was telling you all actually about this the other day. I read a quote that kind of translated similarly. It was actually about breakups and it went along the lines of like, when you break up with someone or when someone breaks up with you, it isn't difficult like removing that person from your life. It's difficult coming to terms that you are no longer the same person that fell in love with that person when you did, you know, date them, like, be with them. And I think it translates so similarly to imposter syndrome in the sense that you are becoming someone that you don't recognize anymore. You are elevating yourself. And so coming to terms with that is, is scary, especially because, you know, a lot more, you know, guesswork and, and stuff is needed yeah. doing so. so you know, imposter syndrome is one of the biggest things. I think a lot of times too, I think my ageism got in the way of just people, you know, thinking you're young, especially in certain industries. It's, you walk into a room and I, I look young, I look 12 or 13. And so until I start talking, people underestimate. Yeah. And I think that's been a barrier definitely within my career so far, but pushing past it. That's awesome, man. Good for you at, at doing that, you know, and, and same here, you know, that when I first started my company, Beige, I was 18 years old and like, it was so hard to get people to take me seriously because simply because of my age. But then I think as you deliver value and you produce more value to to that person that's out they think, right? Whether it's a form of information or, you know, goods and services, that is a differentiating factor, mm -hmm. you know, between someone judging for face value and then see like, yep, he knows his shit. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? And entirely. And I feel like the timeline just keeps getting pushed back. Like I see kids younger and younger you know, under starting stuff or like, oh, yeah. you know, being whizzes at instruments. And I feel like it just like by the time we're in our thirties, it's just going to be like, you'll be cutting this meetings with like 12 year olds, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Just following their passions. Yeah. The journey. So I think the stigma is being removed, but it is. Yeah. It's slowly but yeah. surely for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. That's awesome, man. It, how do you feel like you overcame these challenges of just like your age and you know, yeah. your parents? And I think just a lot of reflectiveness and just looking around and realizing like the deeper you go into business, I feel like you realize the more people just don't know what they're doing. They're all just like also throwing darts at the wall and yeah. just kind of conducting themselves. And also having conversations with people. Like you said, like the moment you start providing value, you realize, wait, like it doesn't matter my age. Like I've been doing this for so long. You're able to niche down and find a really segment that you're uh, unversed and able to execute it's just it all kind of fades away you just get into that like training mode so uh who who did you found uh your company with and yeah so my co-founder's uh best friend called full or his name is cole <laughs> and we met last october around the same time in class that i was building it and you know i'm a big picture guy and he's a small details guy and so we complement each other really well because he connects it no, really small dots and I connect like the bigger picture of like where we're heading. That's awesome, man. What are some of the next steps uh, for you guys? We actually just got accepted to do a competition in Atlanta. We're top 10, so we're flying out there next week. Uh, we have our launch and our validation coming through the summer and then we're looking to raise around this fall or coming winter and just kind of keep moving from there. Wow, wow. Kaden, what is your definition of a mobile? I feel like a mobile is two things. One, a person who follows creativity in their um, endeavors with no bounce. And two, they treat business like a game. Like they really adhere to no rules. They find the cheat codes. They really conduct themselves as if they were in a video game. And that's the best thing to see, right? Wow. That's amazing, man. Based on our conversation and everything I know about you, man, I would consider you a, a young mobile yourself. Thank you. Uh, sure that. What do you feel like has helped you become a mobile? I think being able to be a sponge and soaking in information everywhere you go through any media, right? Not just people, but art and music and just really taking in the world, getting off your phone and just soaking in. I've had, you know, the opportunity to have a lot of great mentors, a lot of great conversations. And then, you know, investing that extra hour with, you know, a person, you never know where it's going to go. What advice would you have? I mean, there was, I feel like so many young entrepreneurs right out there that are uh, young, uh, you know, want to be entrepreneurs, uh, want to get started, right? And, uh, or let's say a lot of young aspiring entrepreneurs. Um, 
what advice would you have, man, for, for them yeah. to just get started? Follow your curiosity, always. Just like the passion is gonna, is gonna continue to drive you. Skill stacking, definitely pick up as many things as you can that are in tandem that you know you can use, you know, whether that's, you know, marketing with um, copywriting or whatnot, right? Like being able to stack multiple skills to create some sort of service or some sort of business. Um, and just, like I said, have conversations and be thorough in, in following what you wanna learn. You know, if it doesn't hurt to reach out, you know, the amount of full emails that I've gotten rejected, but also accepted from people that I thought were so far out of reach, it's just following that, you know? Absolutely, I mean, that was one of my first impressions of, you know, when you're like, hey man, can I uh, meet you, meet up with you sometime? You know, I have some questions. So I was like, dude, like you reached out, like I, I love to help other entrepreneurs and to connect and you know, it just, we just went from there. So yeah. kudos to you for that. Um, but what are some other steps, like some more tangible steps that a young entrepreneur watching this can, can take? Let's say they have a business idea, but they're not. Yeah or they feel that they're not ready to launch. I think the lean startup does the best job at kind of capturing this idea of building a business, right? And you have your initial idea, find a way to test that in small or medium sized batches for as cheap as possible, validate that idea. And if it doesn't work, keep trying different things, right? Fall in love with the problem and not the solution because the odds are the thing that you came up with was a solution and not the problem that you're trying to solve. And if you keep attacking the problem rather than a solution, you're gonna land on something that does work and that you can build. So test as rapidly as possible, whether that looks like for making sure that there's people that want your product or service. And yeah, just keep scaling that way. Wow, okay, I love that, love that. What's next for you this year? So you have this pitch competition coming yeah. up. What are, what are some other things you're focused Yeah, on? I mean, like, like I said, I'm in school right now thinking about dropping out. So it's either I might transfer to USC, I might drop out. So I think that's the next big change for me is figuring out kind of what direction I want to head. Uh, the race and, you know, structuring the business more is obviously huge for me. Yeah. Uh, going to New York Tech Week, so switching sides of the country. Oh, nice. What is New York Tech Week? Uh, June, like mid-June. Mid-June, okay. Yeah, mid early June. I'll be there too. I think those are gotten the big catalyst for me is just, you know, keep the train pushing and keep yeah. adding my passions. That's awesome, man. I recently saw that you were at Rolling Loud yeah. backstage with some really cool artists. Yeah. What was that like? It was really surreal. I got really lucky. You know, I had multiple friends with the different perks and passes over the weekend. I wasn't going to go. I was only going to go for Sunday. Mm -hmm. Ended up being there. Just had some really great conversations. You know, shot my shot. It honestly really solidified that I was where I wanted to be, right? Like, I love live music. I love live events. And I've been going to music festivals since I was 13, so being there and then also being able to experience it from the other side was very validating for me. Of like, yeah, like this is the motivation, this is the direction I want to head into. Um, I actually got to have a 30 second conversation with Tarek, Tarek um, the owner of All Loud. Wow. So we may be connecting as well. So that would be really cool. Yeah, great. a lot of great connections and really validating. That's amazing, man. Yeah. Wow. Well, congrats. I'll yeah. just put yourself out there and uh, being bold, being audacious, you know, um, truly an inspiration. For those that want to connect with you and reach out to you, um, yeah. where, where can they find you? Um, best way is Instagram or LinkedIn, um, K-A-D-E-N. I spell Caden that way. And then Bishop, just like the chess piece. Uh, for my Instagram, it's Caden.Bishop. And then LinkedIn, it's just Caden Bishop. And yeah, reach out. Let's talk. Yeah, absolutely. You guys, take him up on that. Um, you know, he's always open to connect with different entrepreneurs, uh, expanding his network. He has a lot of advice and value to offer, as you guys can see. So, uh, yeah, most definitely, um, you know, reach, reach out and, and, and take that. Thank you so much for hopping on the show, Kaden. I uh, really enjoyed having you on, man. And, uh, you know, I wish you all the best as you scale up Fan Haven and, and, you know, kill it this year. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's been great. I'll see you guys later. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Moguls. We're really excited to see where Fan Haven goes. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to this episode if you received any value whatsoever. And make sure you check out Kaden Bishop and Van Haven. Beast. Yeah.